So what we're working on is we're looking at the effects of wildfires on steelhead wolf action. Um, and so these recent wildfires that we've had last year, like really gave us this great opportunity to do like a series of paired watershed experience, experiments where um, uh, steelhead live in like these different streams. So like there's these four wa um, watersheds where that were burned, right? And they were burned in like this, this mosaic pattern, right? So some of, some of the streams were burned and some weren't, right? And so the idea behind this project is that a bunch of heavy metal, metals were volatilized into the air and it got moved around and then got into the water and all that kind of stuff. And what happened was it affected the development of the young of the year steelhead, which are the steelhead that were born, you know, immediately following the, um, the wildfires. And then the, what we think is that olfaction is super important to steelhead because they imprint, they use their, their olfactory system, like their, their sense of smell, to imprint on their natal home streams, right? And that's how they're able to like be anadromous, like, go, you know, they're born in the freshwater, they go on out to the ocean, they live there for a couple of years and they come back. And they come back like to that exact same spot where they were born, right? Like where they were eggs and they were developed and all that kind of stuff. But they're running into all different, you know, climate change is like causing all different kinds of problems. Like the increase, we've already seen that increased CO2 in the water, increased acidity, it decreases their ability to find their um, naval home streams. And so we think that wildfires is just like one other aspect that's going to um, be detrimental to their ability to get back to these places. And so going back to what what's happening with the development, we think that Something with the heavy metals is is, is um, impacting their olfaction development, and it's going to make it so that they can't get back to. Well, number one, it's going to it's going to impact how they respond to predators, and it's going to impact how they get back to, to get back home. So what we're doing is this kind of like predator response, paired watershed mm -hmm. predator response um, study where. What we've done is we're go we got a bunch of steelhead and we skinned them and we ground up all their skin and then we filtered it and we made these like um, olfactory cues. And then we're going and we're electrofishing in these streams and we're catching these steelhead. And then what we've got were these, uh, they're in that stuff right now. We, we'll, I'll get them out in a little bit. Get, yeah. They're called Y mazes and essentially what they are are like choice mazes. They're like these boxes that have two arms in them and a holding um, mm -hmm. a holding pen, yeah, pen for the fish they get and and then there's water flowing through them from the stream we pump water up from the stream into these boxes and they're flowing through these boxes and then in one arm is just di water is being introduced to it and then in the other arm we introduce this open mm -hmm. this um ground up um skin extract and the idea is that like so this is a burned watershed right like I, i'm sure you guys talked about that on the way up but like you can see there there was all kinds of food and stuff in there and you'll see it if you guys walk up the creek tomorrow and so if their olfaction has been affected in these burned watersheds they won't have like a normal response to these like these predator skin cues when they're introduced right normally they'd like be like oh my god here's all this like skin cue i'm gonna run away from it and stay out of that arm right and so um, and then in normal, and that's, that would be a normal response. But if they were impacted by the fires, they wouldn't have that normal response. They'd just kind of like hang out in it. And so like we put them in this like totally light um, secluded box and we have like light shining up, um, infrared light shining up from the bottom. And then we're like filming them with night vision um, cameras. And so there's like this contrast and, and you can track the fish where they're going like and how much time they're spending in each of the arms. We don't really track it. A computer does it for us. Same thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, It'll essentially give us a tell us if it's like a significant amount of time. That right. Spending yeah. Much. Like, is there a significant di like? Are they like? Is there some type of significant difference about how much time they're spending in like the predator to you arm or just the, you know the control arm? Um, so what we've been doing, like we've been, we get, we have permits. You know, we've got all the permits from CDFW, from the federal government to collect these fish. We can only get 24 at a time because they are federally listed. Federally listed? These ones are. These still had a threatened. Yeah, um, they're threatened, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then, and so we've got the CDFW permits, the federal permits. 
But we can only get like 24 at a time because we don't, you know, you know, you don't want to take them out. You don't want to kill them. They're just and stuff like that. Um, so I'll pull this one out, and you can see it. If you guys want to come take a look, it's pretty. Just a little baby. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Well, it, yeah. don't kill it. Don't kill it. Don't post this online. <laughs> <laughs> right. So another part of the study that we're doing, you guys, everyone got to see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that these 24 fish? What we do is we euthanize them and then we dissect out their olfactory rosettes which is so like in a in salmon and species they have their vomeral nasal region which is basically the bottom of their nose right and they have this epithelial tissue the yeah, epithelial tissue right um which is in a series of um, lamellar epithelial tissue so it's like this really like folded up tissue right to create increased surface area right and it's got a bunch of the olfactory receptor neurons and it looks like this little rose it's about that big well that's you know it looks, it's round and <laughs> in it's, scale yeah, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's how big mine would be <laughs> <laughs> so we cut open their noses and we remove those and then we put them in this R, in these microtubules that are full of rna later and then we're going to send them up to the northwest fishery science center in the NOAA. Center to Dr. Andy Dittman, who's going to sequence the RNA, and we're going to see if we're going to analyze their RNA compared to other um, salmonids and other steelhead that are responding normally, and see if they're see if we can find any differences, and see if we can actually target the sequence, you know, that has the genes for these different olfactory receptor neurons, and see what's going on. With them. Cool. So, um, we thought we'd. I mean, we have to dissect these fish anyway, so if you guys are interested and you don't mind, we're going to totally. analyze one and then um, and show you guys what we're doing. Totally. All right, so what we do is we take a bunch of different metrics. Right now, we're going to take fork length of the fish, which is basically the length from the nose to the fork of the tail. Um, and this one is 65 millimeters. And then what we do is we take um, the mass. Two point nine grams, and then we will put them back on here with that. This is a NOAA card. This is like part of this project where they've pit tagged thousands and thousands hmm. of fish, so they're tracking them. There's like you'll see them. There's antennas across these streams, so like they can track which direction the fish is going, and if it's going out, if it's coming back, and who is it, right? Mm -hmm. On these pit tags that are embedded in these fish. Um. And so what they also do is we take a fin clip from them and give them to them, and then that tracks the DNA, and we can tell who its father was. Um, and that's really common. So pretty much even if you have an incidental take permit, so you're not trying to take salmonids, but you're doing stuff in streams, and you might accidentally hurt one, the requirement is if you do accidentally hurt one, you still have to take a fin clip. So everybody wants this to, to look at the genetics of these overall rare, in, increasingly rare fish. So this is the part that... It's very delicate and great in the sunlight. It's getting kind of dark <laughs> here now. For, it's fine. I mean, we we did this up in the canyon <laughs> in the middle of the night. So this is great working yeah, conditions. <laughs> so what I do is I open up its vomeral nasal region, the top of it. So I open up these rosettes. Don't okay. show this to the people that train me. <laughs> <laughs> So it's kind of delicate. I'm using these tiny surgical spring scissors to kind of, right now I'm just cleaning the skin off of this vomeronasal nasal region to expose this uh, olfactory rosette that we're gonna take out of there. And what I'll do is I'll get this nice and exposed. And then if you guys are interested, you can put on the optimizer and take a look. Cool. 
So, let's do this. Whoever wants to go first. Carmel River burned or didn't burn? Uh, it did burn. It did burn, okay. Yeah. And then we're gonna also look, so for each watershed, we're gonna look at a burn section and then an unburned section. I gotcha, section. okay. Oh, of the same watershed. Yeah. The same oh, watershed. oh, oh, I gotcha, okay, okay, okay. So Willow okay. Creek is close enough for us. That okay. That about like 20 minutes south. That okay. It'll count for our unburned for this watershed. Um, and then it's in like Santa Cruz, we're gonna look at San Lorenzo River, uh -huh. which runs pretty much straight through. Santa Cruz, and then also Pescadero, which uh -huh. is north of uh, <laughs> north of Santa Cruz. Heidi, can I get one more envelope? What? One more envelope. Um, I don't have any more envelopes. Oh. <laughs> 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 Heidi Fish Noah, from Noah. Noah. She is our awesome e-fisher. She mm -hmm. is like oh, nice. the best part of our team, and we can't do any of this work without her. <laughs> Excellent. She's our yeah. hero. <laughs> Back in. Everyone from uh, Channel I, House 4, if there is any heavy metals in the fish's muscle tissue, because, you know, they bioaccumulate. We've also, so, like, the other samples we've taken for um, heavy metals, we've taken water samples, soil samples, lichen samples, macro and vertebrate samples, mm -hmm. and then we're also doing a whole bunch of samples for Cal eDNA, where we're doing, mm -hmm. like, the so are you guys doing like cam metals or they're like just two or three kind of focal There's ones? Like 20, 20 different yeah, metals so, that we're doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Metals, so. yeah, a whole lot. They're really just trying to track it. I think the, this one's got the blocks. The watershed, too. um, or track the move, uh, the heavy metals in the watershed throughout the whole system. So. Yeah, gotcha. I think this guy's got black, so. Mm -hmm. Which is a yeah, fungus. Yeah, really, just one, level one. It's like. This is the fun part, maybe don't. Um, <laughs> <video tape>? yeah, <laughs> I